If you're a Texas landowner and you're interested in improving the quality of the genetics on your ranch, you can contact me at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. See it? Are you kidding me? What? This is heavy. Every deer farm has got a deer like heavy, and that's what they call a lifer out here. And a lifer is one that no matter what, he's not leaving the deer farm. And so heavy is a special deer, and uh, special deer exists on deer farms. And he's giant, I mean, look at his antlers, but uh, he's not for sale. Other deer out here are, but heavy's not for sale. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. So how you doing today, huh? Pretty good, huh? Howdy everybody, welcome to the Texas Hill Country and to rockin' our whitetails. My name is Keith Warren, and on today's Deer and Wildlife Stories, we're gonna introduce you to a couple of these knuckleheads and show you some great big breeder bucks along the way. You like them, don't you? I'm Nathan Ross with Rockin' Our Whitetails. Uh, we are overjoyed to have Keith and his crew back. Uh, so we'll have the opportunity to show him our new place over in Mountain Home, Texas. Regular viewers of the show are probably watching this episode say, you know, I watched last year and I saw deer and wildlife stories at Rockin' Our Whitetails, but the place looks different. Well, it is different. And the reason why is because Rockin' Our Whitetails moved. Now they moved to a new location that's about 10 miles north of where they were, and it's just outside of Mountain Home, Texas. Last year, Keith came to, to visit us. Uh, we were located over in Hunt, Texas, off Highway 39. Uh, we've since moved uh, over to Highway 41 in Mountain Home. Uh, we're loving the new place. Uh, we have a lot of room to expand. Facilities are top notch, and we're excited about the future for Rockin' Our Whitetail. All right, well, it's clear these are one-year-olds. Uh, tell me about them. You got a few of them that are pretty outstanding. Uh, we're proud of them. Uh, we've got some uh, yearlings in here that some of our better ones are out of Freightliner, and then obviously our best ones out of Aftershock. Mm -hmm. Well, who's the, is that Aftershock all cut off right there? It is. There? It is. I'll be doggone. Looks Folks, a little different this yeah, year. Yeah, he than looks last a little year. different. You know, uh, last year we were out at Rockin' Our Whitetails when they were just down the road at the old location. And we got there in just enough time to uh, film Aftershock getting knocked down and, uh, and do what they call a haircut. It was an antler amputation. And uh, we actually made an entire uh, long video of that. And, uh, and it was a pretty cool process because Aftershock, I mean, it's clear now, especially now, and we're gonna show you uh, some of his production later on the show, but it's clear now that that deer right there, Aftershock, he, he has gotten it done. And uh, this year, I guess, because uh, you've got pictures of before and after, right. I mean, but he, he couldn't hold off until we got here, so they had to knock him down a couple weeks ago and cut his antlers off, because again, they got so big, he's got so much power, uh, they got so big that he couldn't hold his head up and it wouldn't be right to, to uh, not cut him off. So anyway, there he is, but he's in a bunch of one-year-olds, and I guess the, you know, in looking at your one-year-olds this year, I mean, last year, we were looking at one-year-olds, and the thing that got me, there were some real nice ones, but. I understand that one of those one-year-olds that we filmed last year has turned into a deer that's got a name. And he's an Aftershock son. Yes. And his name is Jackpot. And we're gonna show you Jackpot and tell you all about him. And you're gonna see how a deer like Aftershock throws because he's making a name for himself in the industry that he gets it done production-wise. It's clear Aftershock is getting it done. There's people all over the country now that are using this semen to actually spread those genetics in their herd. So if somebody wants more information to get a hold of you, give them a phone number. All right, you can reach us at 409-767-5299 or shoot us an email at rockinrwhitetails at gmail.com. And right now, you know what I wanna do? I wanna go see Jackpot. Everybody's talking about him. Let's go. Let's go. 
The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. All right, so here's viewer feedback. I'd like your help with it. It's from a viewer by the name of Murph. It says, I'm a lifelong deer hunter. Although I will never become a deer farmer, I'm fascinated by all the information I learned off your show. My question is about joining a state deer farmer association. Do you have to be a deer farmer to be a member? No, yeah. sir. No. no, sir. Sure don't. No, what you have to be is you have to be a deer enthusiast, what we call it. Uh, deer farmers, of course, are members, but uh, but deer enthusiasts, they're, they're wildlife photographers, they're landowners, they're deer hunters, they're people, anybody who loves the white-tailed deer. So I don't care whether you're in New York or Texas or Florida, if you're interested in deer farming and you love white-tailed deer, I would encourage you to join the state association where you reside, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. That's a good question. If you got any questions for me, you got any comments, you can reach me on my website, hit the Connect with Keith tab. All right, so tell me about the two-year-olds. Well, we're really pleased with the group of two-year-olds we have this year. Uh, a lot of aftershock sons in here that are really showing out, some Freightliner sons. We're pleased with the progress. I mean, we're always trying to get better, mm -hmm. but uh, we're not disappointed with what we have as two-year-olds this year. Well, you shouldn't be. I mean, look at them. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, I, I go back. I remember when I was in that one-year-old pen last year, all these guys were in it. And there were some in there that were like, hey, that guy could grow into something. That guy could grow into something because I know that you had, there are a bunch of aftershock yearlings you had last mm -hmm. year. So there are a bunch of aftershock two-year-olds in here. And I want to know who that one is right there. That's Jackpot. That's look what at I was that. telling what you about earlier. Stud. I mean, look at the mass on him. He's gorgeous. Two years old. Okay, so um, I guess do y'all, and I don't mean, I don't, honestly, I don't know if we have video of him last year or not because you had so many one year olds right. in there, but I'm sure that y'all have a picture of what Jackpot looked at, right. looked like as a yearling. So what we'll do is we'll throw that up on screen now, and I want you to see what he looked like as a yearling. And so it's important, you know, we talk about uh, the, the three things that it takes to, to raise big deer. Uh, for a deer hunter would be age, nutrition, genetics. Well, in the deer farm, it takes genetics, nutrition, and age. And so you can tell that, that deer right there has got the genetics, okay? I mean, he's had the nutrition, now he's just got to get age. And you can tell the difference between one and two years old. I mean, just look at him, I mean, Jackpot is a beast of a deer. He's a big boy. Are you gonna use him to cover with this year? Yes, sir, that's the plan. I was gonna say, I mean, if you don't, I know somebody who would. I mean, that's a heck of a deer right there. Thank you. And the pedigree on him? He's aftershock on a gladio, gladiator on Reno, though. Oh, it goes back to Reno, and Reno is, the Reno got it done. So yeah, still you, doing it. You take a look at the, at the North American Deer Registry, you go down, you say anything from Reno, check mark. That's right. good stuff. Yeah, cool. So give him a phone number. 409-767-5299. Or you can hit us up on email at rockinourwhitetails at gmail.com. Nathan or Christy, they're, they're the kind of people that if you get to know them, it's going to be like, wow, I wish I'd have known you a long time ago because they are wonderful people. Um, I don't know how in the world Nathan got so lucky to get Christy. I mean, look at her. She absolutely loves every single thing about deer farming. Deer farming was meant for Nathan and Christy. Christy is, uh, she's in love with every one of the deer. I mean, I'll sit down there and I ask her about something and all of a sudden she just starts getting so passionate about it, you can tell that she's starting to tear up because she loves the deer so much. So Nathan and I started back in 2011 uh, just for a passion for white-tailed deer. Um, we both fell in love with it. We love the industry and uh, I can't imagine doing anything else. That's incredible, okay? to find a husband-wife team where not only is the husband passionate, I mean, you can look at Nathan and Nathan, it's like he's all over it, okay? But Christy, she's all over it too. And so if uh, if I'm with Nathan, you know, he'll just spout out a, a pedigree like that and tell me who is that deer out of. But Christy, she knows the pedigrees just about as well as Nathan does. If you're in Texas and interested in becoming a deer farmer, you can contact me for deer farming franchise opportunities right here in Texas at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. All right, it is uh, early August, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna, I'm getting the cameraman, setting him up in one of our blinds. We've got blinds in every one of our pens so we can observe and medicate deer if we have to, but what we're doing, this is the time of year that most people wind up uh, 
start looking at deer to buy, okay? And so they call me up, they want to come out to the farm, they call the deer farmers, want to come out to the farm, start looking at the bugs. So this time of year, what I like to do is I like to get a cameraman, put him in a blind, have him take some nice pictures, nice video, and that way we distribute them. We basically market the deer that way. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna get him in the blind, I'm gonna put some limbs out for the deer, and uh, we're gonna see what we have. It's just another day on the farm. So these are three-year-olds? Yes, sir. Well, I'll tell you what, they're pretty. I mean, look at that guy right there. I mean, he's got some good beams on him. That guy flares out good. Okay, how many of these were born right here? All of them. They were all born on your farm? But yes, you sir. brought all these guys in from the other place, right? Yes, sir, we moved them over. My goodness gracious. Okay, so in moving them over, how long did that take you to move them over? It was a process. Uh, we started moving deer in early October. That was mostly all the does to get them ready for breeding season. Right. We ended up getting the last group of bucks moved actually uh, just after the first weekend in December. How many of them total? Uh, at that time there was about, all total, about 350 deer. Oh my gosh. And so you take a look at these guys, there's one guy in here that, uh, come on, what do you say? Come, come, heel, heel, come on, heel. Sit. Are you kidding me? We're gonna revert back and show you the video from last year of a buck with the name of Heavy. That's gotta be Heavy right there. That's Heavy. I mean, the uh, Where Heavy Where we go, is, he goes. You know, the thing is, and, and what do you call him, a lifer? He's a lifer. Okay, tell everybody what a lifer is. A lifer is a deer, for whatever reason, at some point has jerked on our heartstrings and he'll just be here as long as we're farming deer. Yeah, there you go. So when, when we say that every deer on the farm is for sale, we don't really mean that. You know, you wouldn't say your kid. Unless your kid really messed up. I mean, there's some kids I that I know to get sold, but but you know, you sure wouldn't want to sell a deer that you I'd love. I'd probably come closer to selling a kid than I would <laughs> yeah. heavy. Yeah, but uh, you take a look at these three-year-olds and you think, how did they hold up after the move? I mean, during the move, did you have any issues with them? Very few. It was a, a relatively short move. You know, it wasn't like we were bringing them a long distance, but I think anytime you disrupt their normal uh, habitat, that there's some a little bit of stress related to it. So we did have a few issues, but they were very minimal. And I think all in all, they went pretty smooth. And see, when you wind up buying uh, what we call pasture deer, uh, pasture deer are gonna have to be moved to your place. And so you'd come out here and take a look at them, tell Nathan, Chris, you okay, I like these. and. Make whatever deal, whether you want open does, red does, uh, uh, one of these breeder packages. This is what's cool. Uh, he's put together breeder packages. If you want to come out here and say, and tell him what your needs are and what your goals are, and he'll help. He'll show you the pedigrees and help you design a plan. He has breeder packages like 10 does and a breeder buck, and he'll bring them all over at one time, drop them off. And so you can come out here and you can really pick what you want. But uh, if you're interested in coming out to Rockin' Our Whitetails, it's just outside of Mountain Home, Texas. It's only three miles off of Interstate 10. Give them a telephone number so they can call and schedule time for them to come out and see the deer. It's 409-767-5299. And I'm telling you, the folks in Texas, there's, there's a, uh, I mean, there's a lot of breeders in Texas, but there's not a lot of breeders like Nathan or Christy Ross. Okay, Nathan and Christy Ross, yeah, they do a great job in Texas, but they're willing to travel outside the state of Texas in order to go to these different states and introduce them to these wonderful genetics. So if you're a deer breeder, a wanted deer breeder outside of Texas, you can get a hold of Nathan and he'll be happy to talk to you about genetics. These are some good guys right here. Thank you. Any good deer manager, whether they're a, they're a deer hunter or a, a deer farmer knows it takes three good things to be able to make big deer, age, nutrition, and genetic. But on a deer farm, the most important thing is genetics, okay? So age, nutrition, and genetics, call it genetics, nutrition, and age. And the reason why as a deer farmer, we want our deer to get big quick. So we've gotta have the right genetics. So genetics are the number one thing, but they gotta have great nutrition. It's for that reason they rely on record rack deer feed. Uh, we feed record rack, uh, we feed daily bucket feed. We have a 3,000 pound hopper that we pull through the pens. I like to feed daily rather than feeding up because I want to monitor what they're eating, how much they're eating. It gives us a little bit of a heads up as to whether or not we have an issue uh, with the feed or with any type of herd health. This time of year, we're feeding morning and evening. 
to make sure that they are getting fresh feed all summer long and they'll have plenty to last them to the next feeding. Being more hands-on like that just gets us in the pens more. It gives us more contact with the deer and I, I think that we're going to see some benefits from our, our increased herd health from being in the pens more often. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. All right, everybody, if you just joined us, we're at Rockin' R Whitetails. It's in the Texas Hill Country, just outside of Mountain Home. This is Nathan Ross. He's half of Rockin' R. Christy Ross is the other half. Anyway, the, uh, we have just shown y'all a whole bunch of really good young deer. And now we're fixing to show you the breeder buck. So, well, you got four of them in here? Yes, sir. So, start with uh, the one on the left. Tell me who he is and give me a little information on him. Uh, the one on the left is Gumbo. He's a three-year-old buck. Uh, he is a Monarch Supreme son out of a doe uh, that we've seen a lot of production out of, R.W. Tracy. Just a lot of uh, production and consistency out of the bottom side, and we love what he brings to our program. He's got a beautiful frame. I mean, he's got to be 30-plus yes, wide. Sir. I mean, he's a really, really pretty deer. And who's that one right there? That's game over. He is Overnight Express on 0036, who is also the same dam as Gunslinger. Gunslinger. Yeah, yeah. And almost anybody that watched our show has uh, heard of Gunslinger, because I mean, I've bred with Gunslinger at my place. I love Gunslinger. Mm -hmm. So his dam is Gunslinger's yes, dam. Yes, sir. Okay, same well, you can take a look. He is just a beautiful deer. I mean, he just he's just beautiful. Uh, I mean, nice, lots of good up points. I mean, just a good looking deer. That's the kind of deer, especially around here in this area that people really like, isn't it? Yes, sir. You do bring 10 people through the pens. By the time they're finished growing, usually seven or eight of them pick him as their favorite. Okay. Now, who's that other one right there? That's Double Shot. He is a Tebow son out of 100 Proofs Wounds sister. Okay. Now, all these deer, of course, are in the North American Deer Registry. So if you're going to come over here, and you're going to buy a breeder deer or if you're gonna buy what we call pasture release deer, you can, uh, you can look at the North American Deer Registry and, and Nathan will sit down and look at it with you. And uh, you can actually see the, the performance the, on these deer. I mean, what they've thrown, who they're out of. And uh, that's what's cool about the registry. I mean, because it allows any of us that are breeders and members of Nadifa to be able to actually go on and, uh, and be able to, and Nadifa is North American Deer Farmers, to be able to go on and see all this information. There's like 300,000 animals in there. so. These animals are all in there. And what we've been doing, we've been saving the best for last, okay? We want to introduce you to High Expectations. Now, if you take a look at High Expectations, he is absolutely beautiful. And the cool thing about him, now you got to keep in mind that this farm right here, all the deer that are on this farm were moved in here because this was a recent real estate purchase. Yes. And they moved the entire herd up here. And so these animals, you talk about quality animal husbandry. I mean, it starts from the time they're babies with Christy. I mean, she's taking care of these babies like crazy. Okay, she watches them every day, all day, and it lasts all the way through their life. So high expectations at three years old. I'm gonna get Nathan to tell you about his pedigree and we'll show you the NADAR certificate. But in looking at him, that deer at two years old when we filmed him at the other place, he was just as spectacular as he is today. So what's his pedigree? He is a FedEx son out of a Gladiator 2 daughter that goes back to a super doe on our farm, Queen Impact. Oh yeah. And uh, he's been very consistent. Last year he was uh, a little over 30 inches wide. I don't have any question he's gonna be that plus some this year. And we just absolutely love his tine length. He's got everything going for him. Now, I wanna tell you, although in Texas, most of the people that wind up dealing with Nathan and Christy, I would say are buying pasture release deer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that wind up being uh, that wind up buying semen and some breeder deer from them here in Texas. But the cool thing about Nathan and Christie is they've gone outside the state of Texas. They've gone to Alabama, and I, mean, I know last year when I was in Michigan, there were people talking about you and your deer and all. And so they're going all over the country. And what's cool about this, these like high expectations in any of these bucks right here, semen is available. So if you're a deer breeder or you want to be a deer breeder and you're not in Texas, you can get this semen anywhere and get these genetics started on your place. So give them a telephone number if somebody wants to call you. You can reach us at 409-767-5299 or by email at rockinrwhitetails at gmail.com. I'm telling you, if you come out here, I'm going to tell you what you're going to see. You're going to see Nathan, 
and you're going to see the most beautiful woman that loves deer that you have ever seen in your life. This woman, she's a little bitty gal, but you don't want to get in her way because she's going to take care of her deer. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. She's taking care of her deer. And I mean, it starts from the day they're born, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I'd like to thank you for having us out. Thank you for coming. It's always a pleasure. And folks, uh, I encourage you, if you're in the Texas Hill Country, you need to get a hold of Rockin' Our Whitetails. Uh, and I want to thank you for watching our show. If you have any questions or comments, uh, you can get a hold of us through our website. And uh, I want you to make sure and watch our show over and over and over again. You can do so online. And the reason why is because you're going to learn a whole lot about deer and a whole lot about deer farming. My name is Keith Warren, and thanks for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. I'm rolling. Both of them? Mm -hmm. right, you want to do it this time? Yes, I do. You've always wanted to do that, haven't you? <laughs> Since I was just a wee one. you got to hold it up where everybody can see it. Now with that, you got to do it at the same time. Action. Not before. Just no, no, at the same time. Action. Perfect. Okay, let's put that down. All right. So these are three-year-olds? Yes, sir. That's a pretty funny one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was pretty funny. You know, we, I, we got this little toy this year. And know. every place we go, they're going, everybody, action, cut. You know, anyway, so. We got to get busy. Thank you for that. I appreciate <laughs> yeah, it. I knew you'd like that. All right. So these are three-year-olds? Yes, sir.